Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. This is the worker Harry. And that back wall over there is about 100 feet away from where I'm standing right now. That was the sound of the dart hitting the wall at a 300 FPS velocity with only the upgrades included in the box. Wait, what? I haven't reviewed a blaster from this company before, so I have to give background on the company. Wait, didn't you just review the swordfish a couple days ago? I did. I did do that, but that blaster doesn't count. So the worker hair- But that's not fair. Just because it isn't your blaster doesn't mean it doesn't have any value. <sighs> I know, but the blaster has a different platform than this blaster does, so it just kind of falls apart when you try and compare it to- The viewers have to know why, Tessera! They have to know why you're making this decision! Okay, fine! The worker swordfish doesn't count because it's not really a blaster at all. It's a platform in which you build your own blaster on top of. Worker never designed for that blaster to actually be a blaster that you could just buy. The worker harrier, on the other hand, is a blaster that you can get from out of darts, and it's basically already completed. You just put it together, and you can start shooting people with it. But the harrier comes with all sorts of upgrade springs and attachments and stuff that you can really put on it to make it better. I'll get to that in a minute! But anyways, the worker harrier. Let's just start this blaster off with the design. So yeah, the blaster, it's a Nexus Pro. It, it looks like the Nexus Pro. I mean, it looks way better than the Nexus Pro does, but the actual shape of the blaster, if you look at it in comparison to the Nexus Pro, basically copies the design. It looks the same. It's got a buffer tube stock. It's got a long barrel. It's got a pump grip, and it has the magazine port right here with the same sort of paddle mag release. It is, it's a Nexus Pro, but they fixed all of the annoyances that the Nexus Pro shell had. The design of this blaster is sleek, aerodynamic, and beautiful, and covered in metal pieces. I mean, it's got metal rails all over the place, all these metal screws that are exposed so that you can take them off, metal barrel, metal grip guard, metal trigger, and of course, all metal internals. They really went all out on the metal, and that does come with a little bit of a cost. The blaster is heavy. It weighs more than a pound. But I think it's worth it, because the blaster feels so premium. It feels better than any Nerf blaster I own. In fact, it feels better than everything that I own. This is the best. If we cut to the ergonomics, technically only one thing counts, the main grip, but I am going to count the foregrip and the stock as well, just because these are the two that are included with the blaster. There is another foregrip included, but it isn't the default one. It's a bolt handle, it's made of metal. There's really not much to say there. It's a nice bolt handle, but this one I'm going to go over a bit more detail on. The main grip is fantastic. With the sort of new generation of worker blasters, they introduced a new kind of grip, which surpasses every kind of nerf grip I've ever used, except maybe the Vortex one. I want to review Vortex Blaster later on. The Ricochet doesn't count, but yeah, the grip on this is just absolutely amazing. Not just because it's smooth, routed, and filleted, but also because it has a rubber kind of exterior texturing on it, which just makes it so nice to put your hand on. It feels great to hold this thing. The foregrip that it comes with it is the sort of regular worker style vertical pump grip and it is very nice. I love this kind of grip and I want to get more of these to put on more of my blasters. Same goes with the stock. This stock is stable, comfortable, it's flat, it's solid, it feels great. It's just, oh my gosh, they really went all out on the ergo just as much as they went all out on the design. So how does this blaster work? It's a pump action springer. You take a magazine, it has a skinny pusher so you can push that in whenever. To prime you pull back, you push forward, and then you can fire once. And it shoots so hard that it just ricocheted back and went into the zombie target, which is sitting right next to me. That wall is about 10 feet away, and the zombie target's right here. This blaster shoots 300 feet per second. 300, and it is absolutely terrifying to be anywhere near the other side of this barrel. There are a couple things I want to note. First of all, the smoothness of Prime. I have added a nylon wheel upgrade to it, so it's a little bit smoother than you would have it out of the box, but already out of the box, the Prime was buttery smooth. It's also worth noting that, yes, you can literally change out the wheel bearings on the priming handle to make it buttery smooth. And I gotta tell you, it is just... It's so cool. Also, yeah, spring return, which is pretty cool on a blaster like this because usually you only see that on pistols or small sidearms. And then, yeah, you can always just pull it back and hold the trigger down. The trigger pull is extremely snappy, very responsive and nice feeling trigger, partly due to the metal components and also just because it was designed really well. Now, hang on, before we get to the firing demo, I want to point out something really important. What I meant at the beginning of this video by modability, this blaster is basically designed like a Rubik's Cube. It holds itself together extremely well, but then when you need to get into it, it pops right open and you can access whatever you want. 
Every single piece of this blaster is modular, meant to be opened, removed, replaced, refurbished, and then put back in, good as new. The blaster is so well designed to the point where you can literally change anything and everything about the mechanism other than putting in slam fire. But I mean, if you put slam fire in this, then the whole concept and mechanism of the blaster would change. So I understand why they didn't do that. For the rest of us, this blaster is like a dream come true. A lot of people would really like to enter the modding space, but are too intimidated to, for good reason. You need to have knowledge in one of two things or both, either how to solder comfortably and how to, or how to, disassemble and fix a springer if something should happen to go wrong, both of which are kind of terrifying when you look at them from outside. This blaster has neither of those problems because everything can be swapped out easily and it allows lots of experimentation with minimal risks. And already I can comfortably say that this blaster would probably be the perfect platform to start modding on if you want to enter the hobbyist space. It's not that expensive considering what it's doing and it does everything it's trying to do extremely well out of the box. So so even if you don't want to mod it, you've got one hell of a springer. But then if you do want to, you've got lots of room to experiment on. Now I'm going to shut up and get to the firing demo before I spoil my entire opinion before that. I got no comments. Five shots. And now I can start talking again. This blaster is so cool that I can't find any complaints with it. Really none. Even the price seems completely justified because you are getting $200 worth of stuff here. I mean, when you buy this, you get lots of stuff. You get two springs, two grips, two barrels, you get two magazines, you get a stock, you get two Allen keys. One of them fit in the stock and are able to disassemble the blaster right then and there. And you have a scar muzzle that you can attach right on the front. The only sort of downside to this blaster is the fact that the scar muzzle can be removed and now the blaster is completely illegal. But that brings up another argument. It's a scar muzzle. Why would you want to take it off? It improves the accuracy of your blaster. Now I'm not going to lie, $200 is unreasonably expensive no matter what kind of blaster you're in the market for. If you're like up at the top tier hobbyist space and you spend that much on pistols anyways, then okay, sure. But if you're like me and you're in the sort of casual market, $200 is a lot. That's how much the Prometheus cost it. And this thing isn't even doing anything too special when it comes to actual stock performance. It's just a pump action springer that shoots unreasonably hard. But when you pay $200 for this, you get $200 out of it. This blaster is absolutely fantastic and I cannot recommend it enough and has without a doubt earned its spot up on my wall right next to where my head is because this is the perfect level. I want to be able to take this blaster down in a heartbeat and play with it whenever I want. So yeah, the Worker Harrier. Purchase link in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.